So before we get too far into this, my voice might sound a little off because I'm just now recovering over a cold, but I still want to get some audio recording done so I get the video out on time. So if I sound a little off, that's why. After the surprising success of Monster Hunter 4 U, Capcom released a trailer on a new Monster Hunter game. It showed off some interesting scenes that had some cool flashy action in it, and ended off with the title showing Monster Hunter with an X. People were a bit confused, wondering if the X meant 10, though I wasn't convinced since to my knowledge, the series didn't seem to use Roman numerals too much. And it didn't take long for it to be revealed that the X meant cross. From what we understood at the time, the game was going to be a celebration on the last four generations of Monster Hunter, which sounds fucking cool, but we weren't quite sure if we were going to be getting the game here in the West. However, it was soon announced that the US release would be called Monster Hunter Generations, so, you know, it makes more sense. I got super excited and picked up a copy the day it came out. Now, let's make this clear. Generations is intended to be a spin-off game and not a main series game, so is it still worth playing? There isn't much of a story to talk about here. I mean, yeah, okay, you can say the same thing about the other games. But here, it's basically this village wants you to do something, you do it, the end. Alright, there's a little more. Like how they're coming across the new flagship monsters. But there isn't much else, and it ends up being rather... underwhelming. So, I didn't find the story to be as satisfying of an experience as the previous two games I played. Though, I did enjoy seeing characters return from previous games, like Guy and Little Miss Forge from 4U, and Neko, that means Cat, from 3U, and the Elder from the very original Monster Hunter. I'm drawing blanks, there's not much else to really talk about in terms of the story. It's very forgettable, and I guess that's pretty okay since this is just supposed to be a spin-off game. And in comparison to other games, it's kinda shorter, but at the same time, not. You'll see what I mean when we get to gameplay. Alright, so we've been through this a few times before, so let's just get the basics out of the way real quick. The main gameplay of hunting monsters and making equipment from these monsters to hunt other monsters in action-oriented combat while managing your character's stats is still here. So then, what's new? Well, for starters, the meal system is different, as this time you unlock different ingredients to make preset meals that you then choose before going on a hunt. It's a bit weird at first, and took some time to get used to. I can't deny that there are some nice new advantages here, such as some new buffs that the meals can give you, and some meals are guaranteed to give you a stamina boost no matter what. There are four towns to visit, each one representing the four generations. First off, we have Kokoto Village from the original Monster Hunter, which I quite enjoy and it's where I spend most of my time. Even though the OG Monster Hunter isn't a very great game, I still have some fond memories of it. Then there's Poke Village from the second generation, which is neat to see and I like how snowy it is. There's Yokomo from Portable Third, which is an awesome Eastern Asian feeling town that I haven't gotten to play in before. Last but not least, we have the all new village called Bierna. Bierna? Bierna? Okay, I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's for the fourth generation. And honestly, I don't care much for it. It's at this new town where you can now recruit Palicos by talking to this one girl. Palicos can still go out on Meowster hunts, but it's a bit different from Ford U, as it's a canon game and is more for getting some materials and a few special rare materials, and I don't use it all that much to be honest. Palicos can also be used for multiplying items at the trader. When you're out hunting, you can of course have Palicos hunting with you, and their AI is not as useful this time around. Maybe it's just me, but it didn't seem quite on point, which might have something to do with how they learn skills this time around, which I didn't fully understand. The coolest thing about the Palicos is their equipment, and now, whenever you make a new weapon or armor for yourself at the blacksmith, you get scraps to make armor and weapons for your Palicos at their own blacksmith. It's super useful, and it's a system I hope that stays, as it benefits both the hunter and the Palico at the same time. Not only that, but in this game, you can even play as a Palico. This is fantastic for gathering materials and harvest quests, since they can run forever with no need of stamina, and they have endless pickaxes and bug nets. The downside is that they control kinda awkwardly, and their attacks feel just a little off and are slow for me, so I don't enjoy hunting as them. Though they do have some cute gestures. Not only that, but they're also kinda weak. So to make up for that, they have a lot of revival options. 
Since you can now play as a Palico, there are these new Palico exclusive quests, which are okay. But again, I didn't enjoy hunting as a Palico, so I didn't care much for these. Though I did use Palicos quite a bit for doing harvest quests, and I did do these quests in order to upgrade my trade system. You still have your training quests, gathering quests, hunting quests, egg quests still suck, and harvest quests. A small but great change is to Harvest Quest, where your Paw Pass tickets are now available right from the start, which makes quick gathers much less annoying. To make this spin-off stand out more, the combat has been changed a bit. Now we have Hunter Arts and Hunter Styles. First off, Hunter Arts are these new superpower moves that you can charge up by fighting monsters. The more damage you do to a monster, the more the bar fills. There are different hunter arts for each of the weapons, ranging from some support moves to super cool looking offensive moves. I think these arts look pretty cool and are useful, but I don't tend to use them too much, since you have to touch, well, the touch screen to activate them anyway. Hunting styles, on the other hand, change up how you use your weapon. Okay, so we have guild style, which is your standard way to hunt with your weapon. Keep in mind, some of the weapons have been changed a bit since for you, most notably the charge blade. Next is aerial style, which replaces your dodge roll with a flip that lets you perform an aerial attack so you have an easier time mounting monsters with weapons other than the insect glaive. For me, dual blades are the most fun to use in the style. Moving on, we have Adept Style. So, if you time your dodge roll just right, you will jump through a monster's attack, hurting them and letting you quickly get off a counter strike. It really helps to know a monster well when using this style, otherwise, it's a pain in the ass. Oh, and then we have Striker, which lets you have more hunter arts and charges them up faster, so I never really used it. All the styles will change how you use your weapon, so while you might like a style, the weapon you use might not have very good combos to complement it, like Adept with Insect Glaive. Even though I mainly stick with guild style, I like how they added the new styles to create some extra variety when hunting monsters with the same weapon. In fact, some monsters are super easy with the right weapon and the right style. Single player this time around is mostly just low rank, while high rank is mostly in the multiplayer. High rank comes with some extra maps from For You, more early 4th generation monsters, and some older generation monsters as well. Then there are Hyper Monsters, who are creatures that are constantly in an enraged state, so they hit pretty hard. You can also take on new versions of monsters called Deviants, who have slightly different designs and hit way fucking harder, and can only be hunted in multiplayer. Seriously, I took on Red Helm Arzuros with high rank armor, and one hit took off a good third of my health, so yeah, they're, they're pretty challenging. Personally, I haven't hunted very many of them. It's not complicated to get to be able to hunting them, it's just kind of off to the side and not really put in the main focus. That, and I'm not a huge fan that it's only in the multiplayer, I kind of wish there were a few I could take on single player to get better with how their moves are slightly different, that way I'm better at hunting them with other people. I do like a challenge, and I think the idea is cool, it's just they don't fully interest me. Why don't we also talk about the roster of monsters here, which is quite huge. <laughs> For someone like me who enjoys getting all the different weapons and armor, it makes things a bit overwhelming. That and the quality of the roster is a bit questionable, like Bolodrome, fucking really? At the same time, it is a spin-off game, and it's meant to celebrate the last four generations of Monster Hunter, so I can get why the roster's so big. It's not something you're gonna see in most Monster Hunter games, and I'm okay with that. It's something special for this one. It is cool to hunt some older monsters we haven't seen in a while, or ones I haven't hunted at all. That and the new monsters are really cool, like the four flagships, which we should take a quick look at here. Each one of them represent one of the four generations. Estalos, the electric dragon, who represents the first generation, using the basic wyvern body set used by the Rathalos and Rathian. Then we have Gameth, the ice mammoth, who represents the second generation, since that generation is the one that introduced the ice element. Mitsutsune, the water salamander dragon thing, who represents the third generation that had an emphasis on water and introduced the leviathans. And lastly, we have Glavinus, a fire dino who represents the fourth generation. Uh, cause it's new? Okay, I really don't know how it represents the fourth generation, but it's a cool monster like the rest of them. 
Well, it's using the very similar assets from the previous game, which looked pretty good, so as does this one. To be fair, there are some new things, like a different eating animation when getting a meal, and the particle effects are different as well, like how the poison bombs have a thicker looking mist to them. I also like seeing the old maps return and being updated. It's great seeing the Hills and Trees map make a return, now known as Verdant Hills, I guess. But yeah, I love it. And it's pretty cool to see maps I haven't played on before from the second generation, like Arctic Ridge and Volcano. Though, with that being said, these are right now my least favorite ice and fire maps in the series. They aren't awful, but I don't enjoy them that much. At least the new Jurassic Frontier map is pretty neat and fun to explore. The new monsters are cool too. They have some great designs, great color schemes, and fun animations. A lot of the music is from previous games, which is still good, and some of it I hadn't heard before, like from the second generation maps. But the highlight in the music for me is the new themes for the flagship monsters. In particular, the Mitsutsune theme and the Gamma theme. You should definitely give those a listen. So, would I recommend Monster Hunter Generations? Yeah, I had fun with it. Sure, if you're like me and you enjoy going for a lot of the armor sets and different weapons, the amount of monsters can be intimidating, and some people might disagree with the roster, but I did enjoy hunting monsters I hadn't before, and the new flagship monsters are super fun to hunt. It has some cool new ideas to play with, like different ways to hunt, need hunter arts, and being able to play as a palico. If you enjoy playing these games more when there's a single player high rank or in G rank, well, you're in luck, cause there was a sequel called Double Cross, it's just, it was only released in Japan. There is a Switch version, so you can pick up a copy and play it on a US Switch, it's just, you can't transfer any data from generations onto it. I enjoyed it as a spin-off title, but I'll let you decide, much like in all my videos on whether or not you want to give it a try. I mean, if you like Monster Hunter, then I would recommend giving it a shot. Well, that concludes my look at the Monster Hunter games that I've played, at least for now. However, I'm not done with Monster Hunter yet, y you'll see what I mean. If you enjoy Monster Hunter, then please check out my second channel where I do monster hunts for fun. If that sounds like a fun thing to you, then come on by. Oh, and don't worry, after I'm done talking about Monster Hunter, I'm going straight back into talking about a certain PS2 series. Until then, I'll see you guys later.